planning for the future? Searching for a wise investment? Looking for your own place? We all dream of being financially set for life. Although you can save money in the bank, that won't protect you from inflation. There is a better way to make your money work for you, such as investing in smart real estate that provides high appreciation and value. Regular cash as passive income and an elegant design and a healthy lifestyle. With a property investment from Etalpinas, you can grow your money and protect it from inflation. Earn hassle-free rentals by leaving the job to our property management service handled by Damiani. And enjoy green living with fresh air, natural light, less cost for electricity and water, and to protect the environment. Enjoy living in multi-awarded Italian design buildings. For the price of one cup of coffee per day, you can gain peace of mind and secure your future with a new home from Italpinas. Contact our property specialist to learn more about our flexible payment schemes. Invest for your future. And start your elegant green living lifestyle today with Italpinas. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the SOAR 2021 event. We need to stop uh, doing... This is uh, Lawrence Diller, Vice President of the Italian Chamber. I will be your uh, moderator today. And uh, I hope uh, you're going to enjoy this absolutely fantastic event where we have gathered uh, uh, some great speakers for you. We will be talking about uh, Region 10. Uh, this is a real exclusive event about uh, this fantastic uh, thriving region, where we will discuss about uh, the economy, about opportunities, uh, especially now in this uh, pandemic, or I, we hope that we are nearly at the end of this pandemic, and uh, our center point, apart from the focus on uh, the whole uh, region, is certainly real estate today. Uh, as uh, many have noticed, real estate uh, brings a lot of wealth. And real estate, especially in the provinces in general now, and land has increased its value dramatically. So it seems to be a great opportunity to uh, invest in uh, real estate, but our speakers today will definitely tell us all the secrets and all we need to know about it. So, first of all, uh, this event is about sustainable opportunities and advocacies in the region, so in Region 10. And uh, we have speakers from government, from the private sector, and from the real estate sector, and also from Banking. Our first speaker today uh, is the regional director of NEDA, Director Mayla Fay Aurora Carino. She was first an educator teaching physics and chemistry before venturing into government. She believes that public service, like teaching, is a vocation and a lifelong commitment to give preferential treatment to the poor, underserved and underprivileged, people who live in the margins of society. Director Carino believes in living a culture of excellence and compassion in all aspects of life. Director Carino was a honor student from elementary until her graduate studies. She finished a degree in Bachelor of Science in Physics for teachers as a DOST scholar from the Philippine Normal University in Manila, and she graduated cum laude with honors. Then she has a degree in Masters of Arts in Demography from the Australian National University. She graduated with honors and was given 
a chancellor's commendation for performing with high distinction and was confirmed the Charles Price Award in Demography for best overall result in MA Demography. Director Carino's training and experience encompass regional and local development planning, spatial and rural accessibility planning, program project development and management, investment programming and budgeting, policy formulation and coordination, program project monitoring and evaluation, mainstreaming GAD, culture and conflict sensitivity in development processes, and strategic networking and coordination. Aside from work, Director Carino is also involved in civic and professional organizations like the Rotary Club of Cagayan de Oro, East Urban, Toastmasters Club, and the Philippines Australia Alumni Association, serving in different capacities. A believer in lifelong learning, Director Carino regularly attends trainings here and abroad for greater effectiveness and improved competence in work and personal life for introducing innovations in her workplace and in her civic organizations and performing beyond expectations and the call of duty, Director Carini received various awards of commendation and recognition from partners and other stakeholders. To cite a few, she was selected as one of the 2014 Distinguished Alumni of PNU Manila and the 2018 Governor General Francis Burton Harrison Public Service Awardee. In August 2018, she was identified by the Eastern Mindanao Command as one of its civilian awardee. In October 2018, she was also re recognized by the Philippine Army as one of its civilian awardees. Most recently, the AFP named her as its 2018 Kapayapaan Awardee. This award was confirmed by no less than President than the President of the Philippines. Under her leadership, Neda Caraga and Neda Region Dem were recognized by the Banco Central ng Filipinas as the 2018 and 2019 BSP Stakeholders Award for Outstanding Partner for a report on regional economic developments, respectively. Now, I do not want to uh, let you wait longer. Uh, I would like to now welcome Ms. Uh, Carino. Uh, and uh, Ms. Carino, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Lawrence. Maing hapon ka natin tanat. Allow me to share my screen. Once again, maayong adlaw ka natin tanan on behalf of the organizers, Olacon, Italpinas Development Corporation, Bank of Philippine Islands, and the Northern Mindanao stakeholders. I welcome all participants to this conference. We are grateful for your keen interest on the Northern Mindanao region and its business prospects, especially along real estate and tourism. I am grateful for this opportunity to update you about the region's prospects and development opportunities. I consider this conference as our collective commitment to a whole of society approach in attaining a buoyant economic recovery for Northern Mindanao. This is manifested by our ardent intention in expanding the, the perspective of our business stakeholders on investment and development, which would translate into progress for Northern Mindanao. Amid the uncertain situation due to COVID-19, we continue to entertain various requests to impart the development directions and investment opportunities in the region. Early this year, Japan signified its interest in the region. In January, we conducted an online business seminar in partnership with the Consulate General of Japan in Davao. Japan is keen on the prospects for Metro CDO, especially on the pursuit of a rail mode of transport, particularly the Metro Cagayan de Oro Railway project. As an offshoot, a subsequent online business seminar highlighting transportation infrastructure and energy is spearheaded 
by the Consulate General of Japan in Davao and NEDA 10 in collaboration with the Cagayan de Oro Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And this business uh, seminar will be conducted on October 7 of this year. Further, the NEDA 10 participated in the Northern Mindanao Business Conference last July 27, organized by the Italian Chamber of Commerce in the Philippines, the German Philippine Chamber of Commerce of Industry, and the Cagayan de Oro Chamber of Commerce and Industry Foundation. We boldly endorse Northern Mindanao's comparative advantages, which gives it as an, an edge for uh, the preferred leading investment destination for both local and foreign direct investments. The region has a land area of 20,186 square kilometers, representing about 7% of the country's total land area. It ranks number five among the country's 17 regions in terms of uh, size of uh, area and the number one among Mindanao regions. Our region, Northern Mindanao region, is composed of uh, five provinces, two highly urbanized cities, seven component cities, 84 municipalities, and 2,022 barangays. Seven cities and 51 municipalities are located along the coastline, while 36 are inland cities and municipalities, 22 of which are in the landlocked province of Bukidnon. Many of these inland areas are considered geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas or GDAS, characterized by spatial isolation due to distance, weather conditions, and transportation difficulties, high poverty incidents, presence of vulnerable sector and communities, or recovering from situation of crisis or armed conflict. Northern Mindanao's total population breached the 5 million mark based on the results of the 2020 Census of Population and Housing. The total population is recorded at 5,022,768 as of May 1 of 2020, or an increase of 333,466, about 7% from the 2015 count. Population continues to move towards Cagayan de Oro City and its peripheries and other major and other major urban centers in the region. This makes Metro City O as one of the fastest urbanizing areas in the country. Therefore, with the metropolitanization of Cagayan de Oro, the region should sustain its massive infrastructure development to create resilient, sustainable, and livable cities. Further, Region 10 has a master plan for the sustainable urban infrastructure development of Metro City O, which will serve as blueprint to prepare to propel its further development. Over the past three years, Northern Mindanao has established a strong economic performance, growing at an average of 6.6% .6 from 2010 to 2019. However, the lingering COVID-19 pandemic disrupted this momentum. In 2020, COVID adversely affected the economies of countries, sparing no one. Across the Philippines, Region 10 had the third slowest contraction among 17 regions at 5.2%, which was well within our recalibrated targets. At best, we estimated that Norman's economy would contract at 4.7% and worst at 7%. In terms of share to the Philippine economy, Region 10 ranked 7, con seventh, contributing 4.7%. For the period 2017 to 2019, Norman or Northern Mindanao achieved near full employment levels. This dropped to 93.6% in 2020 as the pandemic displaced workers. In fact, unemployment rate hit a 15-year high in April 2020 at 11.1%. Nevertheless, this unemployment figure was already the lowest among the 17 regions in the country. Based on the results of the latest poverty survey in 2018, which was released in 2019, both the national and regional targets in alleviating poverty have been achieved. However, this substantial decline in overall poverty from 2015 to 2018 will not be sustained in the remaining plan period given the scaring effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on incomes. Hence, the 2021 target was revised to between 23 to 25% instead of less than 15%. Projected job losses and income decline are initially identified as factors for such downgrade. 
Nonetheless, said target is proximate to the 2018 figure as the region strives to cushion and quickly recover from the socioeconomic impacts of the pandemic. Accomplishments from 2017 to 2020 have been mixed, while the productive sectors moved sideways Targets for employment and poverty were mostly achieved. However, the region lost ground in 2020 due to COVID-19 induced economic recession. Thus, headline targets were updated to reflect recent and emerging trends and consider imperatives for recovery. As far as uh, COVID is concerned, Northern Mindanao is faced with the gargantuan task of hastening vaccination efforts, improving health systems capacity, and inculcating an adaptive behavior among businesses, local governments, and the general public on transitioning to the new normal way of doing things. As of August 31, per report of the Department of Health Regional Office 10, COVID-19 cases in the, region, in the region reduced with two-week growth rate at moderate risk level of 9.58%. The reduction of cases in Cagayan de Oro pulled down regional cases. However, average daily attack rate in CDO is still high at 20.5%. However, if we plan to attain herd immunity within 10 months, we need to increase the daily target of number of vaccinated persons by 20%. Northern Mindanao is committed to attaining the Filipinos' collective long-term vision and aspiration for self and the country in the next two decades. This is what we call as Ambition Natin 2040. The aspiration is for Filipinos to be strongly rooted, comfortable, and secure over their lifetime, or having a matatag maginhawa at panatag na buhay. In the region, we contribute to the realization of this vision by aspiring to be the, lead, the leading gateway and industrial trade and industrial and trade center in southern Philippines, wherein both dynamic men and women enjoy equal opportunities in sustainably harnessing our agricultural and natural resources towards a decent, harmonious, and safe environment. Our strategic directions are also laid down in various implementation plans, which include the updated Philippine Development Plan, the Northern Mindanao Regional Development Plan, the Northern Mindanao Climate and Disaster Risk Sensitive Regional Physical Framework Plan, and the Mindanao 2020 Peace and Development Framework. Strategically located, Northern Mindanao is being positioned as the industrial trade cluster of the Mindanao Development Corridors. We also assert our strategic role as the leader in high-value agriculture-based and fishery products and a key player in manufacturing and other high-productivity sectors. The recent pandemic has not deterred us from pursuing our aspiration to become the leading investment area for both local and foreign direct investments. Here are a few of our development priority thrusts which our business partners can consider in their plans to invest in Northern Mindanao. The region is pursuing investments for an integrated steel mill in the Philippines. This investment is seen as a game changer for the region and the country as a whole. A total of 30,000 direct and indirect jobs will be created with the establishment of the steel mill and the creation of downstream and upstream ancillary services. We have all the necessary support facilities in place, particularly the power and water utilities to operate a steel mill. In fact, the NEDA 10 in the latter part of last year commissioned a study on the competitiveness analysis of Northern Mindanao as a potential location for the establishment of an integrated steel mill in the Philippines. The study aims to describe and analyze the competitive advantages of locating an integrated steel mill in Northern Mindanao. The study will be completed this year. Agri-food innovation from farm to fork is one of our major strategies towards post-pandemic recovery. Our long-term aspiration is the Metropolitan Food and Agri-Based Products Cluster, which was introduced by Bajo uh, Ningan University and Research of the Netherlands. Adopting the MFAPC concept, the Cagayan de Oro Illegal Corridor would become the subject of the metropolis. The Fividec Industrial Estate in Lanao del Norte, uh, the Fividec Industrial Estate in Misamis Oriental, and the Metro Illegal Regional Agro Industrial Center in Lanao del Norte may become the consolidation centers. 
at least five agri parks may be established region wide. Two agri parks in Bukidnon for northern Bukidnon, that's in Manolo Fortich, and southern Bukidnon in Maramag. And each one for Misamis Oriental, Lagindingan, and Misamis Occidental in Oroquieta. And uh, of course, Iligan for Lanao del Norte. Digital transformation is one of the major challenges of the region. Despite the increasing demand for ICT, coverage for cellular mobile telephone system is only at 75%. A total of 498 barangays remain to have no access to ICT, or this is around 25%. These areas are mostly in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas with low population density. Therefore, from a business perspective, business perspective, these areas are not viable for the installation of additional towers as it entails huge investments. In line with building resilient infra, promoting inclusive and sustainable industrialization and fostering innovation uh, as espoused in the sustainable development goal, Northern Mindanao, through the Regional Development Council, has undertaken several initiatives to accelerate the deployment of critical ICT infra. Efficient and affordable ICT infra and services allow communities to participate in the digital economy, thereby increasing their overall economic well-being and competitiveness. Deploying this infra requires heavy capital investments. This is a potential area for collaboration with our local businesses. As the country is still reeling from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, the urgency of bouncing back and providing essential services such as telemedicine, e-commerce, online learning, and telecommuting will largely depend on the state of the country's internet. The RDC-10 continues to pursue a more digital-friendly policy environment that would foster increased innovation and investment in Metro CDO and the rest of Region 10. Where can you invest in agriculture and ag and the uh, agribusiness. First, for processed fruits, um, in establishment of dehydration plants, feed mills, bottling, and quarantine, tre quarantine treatment facilities, such as but not limited to vapor heat treatment, individual quick freezing, hot water treatment, and other processing facilities. For vegetables, we are best suited for production of both tropical and temperate vegetables. Investment opportunities can be in production and processing of high value vegetables such as rain shelters, packing sheds and cold chain facilities, processing plants and refrigerated transport services. In poultry and livestock, you can invest in a triple A dressing plant or slaughterhouse, corn post harvest facilities, feed mill and integrated cold chain facility. In aquamarine, uh, it can be an integrated uh, fish terminal, post-harvest equipment and machinery, multi-species processing plant hatcheries, mariculture, seaweed production, aqua feed mill, and ice plant. Last but not the least, there are huge potentials for abaca, rubber, coffee, cacao, cocoa fire, bamboo, processed fruits and nuts, processed food, wearables, and home style. These are products which have high demand from consumers and industrial use. Investments in manufacturing. There are there is so much potential in terms of um, investment opportunities in manufacturing, particularly in processing facility for furniture components and other wood-based construction materials, steel fabrication, fabrication of agri implements and post-harvest facilities. For processed food, investment opportunities can be found in the establishment of a food packing center, food laboratory testing center distributors of packaging materials which are environmentally friendly or biodegradable processing equipment research and development cold storage for meat processors there are also investment opportunities in uh, woven textiles crafts and ppes using abaca and rubber these two materials namely abaca and rubber are have a are potentially going to be in the forefront in the years to come to produce at an industrial scale for the export market we have the land, we have volume, we have the resource. Investments in the service sector, particularly in the field of transportation, communications, real estate development, logistics, engineering and maintenance, including innovation, ecosystem support, financial services, and trading. It is with joy and honor that Italy, through IDC pioneers in investing sustainable real estate development in the region, particularly in the highly urbanized city of Cagayan de Oro. This is truly the future we want as we also commit 
to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals wherein business, government, and consumers are adapting sustainable consumption patterns with sustainable production practices for both domestic and foreign businesses. One of the challenges that we foresee, especially on post-pandemic recovery, is housing settlement inadequacies, especially aggravated by rapid population growth, urbanization, and urban migration. In anticipation of more social acceptance for vertical development, including settlements in Cagayan de Oro and other urban centers in the region, we welcome investors in property development that would introduce more sustainable practices, even to the extent of socialized housing. This would also contribute to our pursuit for an inclusive urban development. On waste management and renewable energy, in the pursuit of a balanced social and economic development, and also the pursuit to eliminate infrastructure gaps, solid waste disposal is a major concern. One of the priority projects that shall be pursued is the Metro Cagayan de Oro Waste to Energy Project. Hence, the region welcomes state-of-the-art technologies that would help us manage solid waste and similarly contribute to energy security. The implementation of this waste-to-energy project is part of a cluster approach to solid waste management in Metro Cagayan de Oro, wherein adjacent LGUs are grouped and serviced by a common WTE facility. About three clusters can be established, one for LGUs located along the western side of Metro Cagayan de Oro, one for LGUs located in the eastern side of Metro Cagayan de Oro and one for Cagayan de Oro. To end, I would like to believe that this business conference marks another milestone in our shared aspiration for the development and post-pandemic recovery of Northern Mindanao. This collaborative undertaking will spur more business, venture conversations, and hopefully commitments and investments translating into sustainable jobs and incomes. Congratulations on this bold initiative and leadership to empower the business sector and contribute to regional development. Truly, your investment expansion in Northern Mindanao is a welcome opportunity for our people and for the economic recovery and bright future of our region. For a healthy and resilient Philippines, dagang salamat and mabuhay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Mayla. Uh, that was a very precious uh, contribution. Uh, we know that uh, NEDA and you as uh, the regional director are the um, best uh, person and entity to go to to understand where investments are need to be directed. Um, I would uh, suggest everyone to watch uh, her presentation again later on uh, on uh, the Facebook page of Ziguro CDO. You will all receive a notification. Uh, Ms. Maila, you talked about sustainability, and I think that is a center point of today's uh, uh, presentation and today's event. Uh, sustainable development is uh, definitely uh, a, a necessary uh, component for the future of our children and for the future lifestyle of our children. Uh, so thank you again, Ms. Maida. I hope we can uh, collaborate uh, for uh, future investors that may come in, and I hope you can stay for our uh, Q&A later on. So thank you, Neda. Thank you, Ms. Maida Carino. Uh, we are very happy to have had you. Here. So we can now go on to our uh, next speaker. Uh, our next speaker uh, comes uh, from a different world, actually, still from this world, but he is a local business tycoon, if I can uh, call him like that. Uh, he is into many biz businesses, uh, mainly, uh, I would say, into leisure and uh, tourism. So uh, I hope uh, he is among us here. Uh, Elvi, are you among us? I'm here. Okay. Uh, all right. So I will introduce you now formally. He is the president and CEO of uh, Parasat uh, Cable TV and uh, Dahilayan Adventure Park, as well as Seven Seas Water Park and Resort. 
and also an event data contact uh, incorporated. That is a VPO uh, call center business. His uh, other uh, affiliations are his uh, past president and chair of the Philippine Cable TV Association, past president of Cagayan de Oro Chamber of Commerce and Industry Foundation, and also former chair and board of trustees of Xavier University. He is an independent, an independent director of A. Brown and uh, South Bank. Uh, he is the president of uh, Promote Northern Mindanao Foundation and board member of GSAT Direct to Home Satellite Service Provider. So you're all around. Uh, let uh, me give you the floor. Uh, you're absolutely welcome, LP. Uh, I hope uh, you will enjoy this event. Uh, good afternoon, Lawrence. Good afternoon to all the attendees in this uh, SOAR seminar. You know, after listening to our regional director of NEDA, uh, it, it seems like, you know, there's too much excitement in the horizon. You know, I, you know, I, I would say that there are limitless opportunities uh, that, you know, I think... Uh, uh, we have in the region, uh, also in Cagayan de Oro and our major cities. So uh, I opted to uh, adopt a, a short presentation from, uh, from the Department of Tourism regarding the, limit, uh, the, uh, the latest updates on what their initiatives are regarding tourism. I'll talk briefly about tourism and maybe I can talk a little bit also about the other businesses we are in that I believe would be part of the development and part of the, you know, uh, uh, that would uh, uh, adapt to the leisure and lifestyle opportunities that uh, we will um, have in the next, uh, after the pandemic. So uh, permit me to just go over this presentation. Okay, uh, the Region 10, uh, uh, Department of Tourism um, uh, has uh, initiated a lot of trainings despite the, pan the pandemic. They have really um, done their job in uh, uh, making trainings uh, for sustainable ecotourism and advocacy campaigns. Uh, also, they have been coordinating with the LGUs regarding uh, the uh, Converge program. The Converge program uh, by the way, is uh, is uh, beneficial to those that have, are creating tourist destinations in the remote areas. Uh, DPWH, uh, Tiesa and Dole, uh, in coordination with the LGU, have been building uh, road infrastructure uh, to the different destinations. Uh, in fact, uh, Dahilayan, uh, which was a far-flung community in the past, uh, is now connected uh, by a concrete road, all-weather road uh, from Cagayan de Oro. And, uh, you know, in, in the past, when we started our business there uh, about 20 years ago, uh, it was really a, a, a very difficult landscape to go to. Uh, we needed a four-wheel drive to go to our area in the Hilayan, which is just in the adjacent municipality of Manolo Fortich in Bukidnon. But however, with the Converge program uh, of DPWH, DOT, and other related government agencies, uh, we were also, I mean, we were benefit, benefited by the building of an all-weather road passing to the pineapple plantations in Del Monte and on the way to the Dahilayan area, which is at the foothills of Mount Kitanglad. So we thank uh, the DOT and DPWH for doing this. Also, we have been, uh, you know, that the tourism development plans for LGUs has been uh, jump-started by uh, the DOT, uh, providing technical assistance, you no, know, and uh, they have helped in uh, conceptualizing and walking through the tourism development plans, uh, which are very important for each of the LGUs. Also, uh, the DOT has been monitoring uh, the many of the tourism-related establishments under the new normal. As you may well know, um, 
tourism has really suffered a huge setback because of the COVID pandemic. In fact, uh, there is hardly any tourist destination that is open in Region 10 at the moment. Uh, we actually did open uh, way back in 2020, a few months in 2020 when uh, the spike uh, in COVID in, in the summertime uh, waned uh, in the second and uh, our last quarter, uh, the third and last quarter of the year. So we were able to reopen some of our tourism uh, destinations in the, in the region. Uh, so, but however, with the, with the spike again, uh, caused by the new variants of uh, Delta and, uh, and the others, uh, we had to close all our establishments uh, because of the difficulty in getting customers uh, confidence, you know. In fact, uh, uh, we the summertime, which is supposed to be the peak period of the tourism businesses, you know, was gone uh, without us making a single centavo. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, we have been subsidizing uh, and maintaining these uh, establishments and destinations, uh, you know. Uh, we could not depend also on government because government is hard strapped. But uh, I believe that most of the tourism operators uh, in, in the region are, have really been hit hard. It's just lucky in, my, in our case that we have another business that actually took up the slack, as it were. Uh, I'm in the ICT business. And that has been, uh, if I will talk about it later, it has been the uh, knight in shining armor for, for the tourism establishments that uh, we have created. So, uh, you know, the, the DOT has really been doing its homework. Uh, you know, they, they have done cap capacity building seminars among the tourism stakeholders and the tourism guides and and those uh, stakeholders that uh, have been affected. And, but I believe that preparation is important because when we reopen, we will really need uh, you know, uh, to adapt to the new normal. Uh, and that a lifestyle has really changed because of pandemic. Uh, before we used to handle you know, huge crowds in in uh, the A-Lion, for example, and uh, also in the water park. But now uh, we are really forced to implement uh, the social distancing rules and minimum health guidelines. And, you know, it, it's causing a lot of disruption. But however, the shining light is that after this pandemic is over, I believe people are so pent up in their homes uh, looking for something to do. And that is why I, I believe that, you know, the, I still believe that tourism will recover, albeit, uh, you know, it might be, it might take a few more years, I think, you know, it's not overnight that you recover the confidence of people, especially that uh, many of us have really been affected uh, physically, emotionally uh, by, by this COVID pandemic. However, we have to look forward. As we, you can see from the previous presentation of uh, uh, our regional director, there's so much opportunity uh, in, in uh, business opportunity in the region. Uh, the, uh, while the, the steel mill uh, project has been you know, uh, slowed down, but I believe that it will push through. Uh, and provide uh, thousands of jobs. Uh, and you can see that despite this pandemic, there is still a lot of activity in Cagayan de Oro. Uh, you know, we are under MECQ right now. It doesn't seem like there is a lockdown. Uh, and, and this is something that is unique perhaps in, among other locations in the country. You know, I think with the with a uh, local government that is really concerned about economic stability, I, I, I guess you know that that we have a price to pay, of course, uh, 
uh, many of our friends have really gone because of uh, the COVID pandemic. But I guess for those uh, those of us that look forward, simply there's still a lot of opportunity. Uh, you know, all the provinces in the region have their own uh, advantages in terms of tourism. Uh, in Bukidnon, for example, the landscape there uh, has been, you know, uh, the landscape really is a is is the you know is the shining light in making Bukidnon one of the Instagrammable, most Instagrammable places in the country. Uh, you know, the new uh, under the new normal, we have you know we have learned that social media has played a vital part in keeping people sane in keeping people interested in traveling. And that's why, you know, all the posts uh, of, uh, you know, places in Bukidno, new places, new places, uh, you know, uh, you will observe that there have been a lot of uh, small businesses related to tourism. It could be as simple as making, a, you know, a habit house, you know, <laughs> that small uh, house there on the side of the mountain and make it at an, as an Instagrammable or vloggable place. And, you know, voila, you know, money comes in, people visit. However, uh, you know, with the lockdown again, you know, that, you know, this, uh, you know, this domestic travelers have, you know, have been uh, affected by, by this series of lockdowns. But I guess, you know, the, there is still that opportunity. I, uh, the, the DOT Region 10 has been making uh, videos. Uh, uh, in fact, they have made some travelogues of Bukidnon and are doing the rest of the region, uh, you know, making a series of uh, video uh, presentations. Uh, also, uh, you will see that our region has a lot of, uh, you know, amazing sites and vistas. Um, if you may well know, uh, there is a upcoming hotspot uh, nearby, they barely an hour away from Cagayan de Oro. Uh, when uh, COVID set in, people wanted to go out and the nearest place they would go out other than Bukidnon would be the Claveria area, which is part of Misamis Oriental. Uh, Caveria, I believe, is the next hotspot uh, for tourism. Uh, in fact, uh, there have been initiatives made by the LGUs of Ingoog and the LGUs of Claveria to create, uh, you know, uh, destinations which are really amazing uh, up to the eye and to the beholder. Uh, and I suppose that once uh, the pandemic is over, expect that there will be a lot of growth there. Similarly, you know, I, I see that real estate, even in these places, has really started to move up. Uh, take in particular uh, the idea of a farm estate. You know, uh, before people did not even think about the farms, about the ambience of uh, living in an in an environment surrounded by uh, lush greenery, uh, being able to uh, also plant your own crops and enjoy the farm animals, you know, now it has becoming uh, it's becoming a phenomenon of sorts. You know, uh, property in Claveria is now, I, I would say not affordable to anyone except those that have, you know, a lot of money behind them. Uh, this is amazing. I'm just surprised that, uh, you know, some entrepreneurs have actually bought large pieces of property and subdivided them to be able to sell them to would-be farmer, uh, urban farmers that are moving out to the distant area in the mountains. So th these are, you know, these are opportunities that 
were part of the, you know, part uh, co caused by the pandemic when people really need to go outdoors. So, you know, uh, in in, uh, in our um, businesses, for example, um, the big the big destinations uh, really suffer more than the than the smaller ones because we when we built these destinations we really borrowed a lot of money to be able to put them up but however i now that i see that the trend is towards really farm tourism uh or mountain tourism uh going out in the outdoors these are low ticket uh opportunities you know it uh one good example is uh uh, in Kitautao, Bukidnon, there's a place called Taglup, Taglukop Strawberry Farm. Before, we didn't even know where it was, but now it's a very popular destination uh, for people from Davao and people from Cagayan de Oro. Uh, it's, a, it's a farm that, you know, that, well, the uniqueness of it is that the entrepreneurs that put it up uh, planted strawberries, as simple as that. So these are things that I believe that, uh, and, and you know, they, they have really been very successful despite the pandemic, because they're, they're far away, far enough from the urban areas that they can open themselves uh, with the, you know, and, and be able to attract customers and maintain social distancing at the same time. So these are things that, you know, that, we should look at, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, the lifestyle of people has changed uh, with, with the pandemic. And that's why I believe that, you know, that uh, being in the region, it's just limitless opportunities, limitless uh, uh, real estate opportunities, because uh, obviously, uh, even without the pandemic, you will see that prices are not going down. Prices are still going up. Uh, as as uh, the regional director Myla said, you know, the a good mass of people are moving from the provinces to the urban areas, and that's you know, that's an opportunity right there uh, in uh, you know even in socialized housing. Uh, well, now I can talk about the opportunities in ICT, uh, which I'm also uh, involved in. Uh, while the business of business process outsourcing has been, you know, dented by the pandemic, uh, there have been a lot of people working in the call centers that have gotten sick because of the, of the COVID problem. Um, some of the real estate here used for call centers and BPOs uh, have closed down. Uh, but this is, I believe, temporary. Uh, the good thing about it is that these businesses continue to thrive uh, despite the pandemic. They will not be anymore in a crowded location uh, like a BPO call center environment, but now people work from home. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, perhaps uh, enhanced by the fact that connectivity here in in the air, urban areas like again the Oro have largely improved. Uh, you will notice every day, day by day. There are people with ladders, stringing cables all over the city. You know, that's a good sign because uh, uh, while there's so much spaghetti on the on the on the poles, that's a good sign because this means that people are embracing uh, connectivity, embracing the internet because their way of life has changed. You know, before we didn't even think that uh, that the, I mean, you know, that the food business in the malls uh, would not suffer. But you know, now the food businesses have moved from the malls to the to the individual homes of entrepreneurs, and you know, the 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 
the uh, improvement also in the logistics sector where you can buy almost anything in the internet. Uh, from the internet, you will see a lot of people riding uh, bikes delivering stuff uh, from abroad to the doorsteps of people. So these are, you know, these are the opportunities that have come to this region. And I believe that uh, uh, we hope to be uh, part of this uh, uh, development. I, I, I still am optimistic about uh, the opportunities here. Uh, it's just a matter of time when we have herd immunity, I guess uh, we will already uh, start to recover. And, uh, you know, with the government behind us, with everyone um, trying to adapt to the new normal, I guess, uh, there's no other recourse but to try and recover. And, you know, we will be part of that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm quite excited to see, uh, you know, that, uh, that the real estate sector is really booming. Uh, another bright light recent development is that uh, Xavier University has, uh, you know, finally uh, agreed uh, to partner with uh, Cebu Land Masters, one of the big, uh, big uh, development companies in the region. Uh, to construct a new brand new campus as well as a uh, modern uh, commercial center that would be adaptable to the new normal and that would be part and parcel of the development in the uptown area. I, you know, the hot spot is in the uptown area right now. Uh, and I think you, you will see that, you know, the, there's a big market already there, the roads getting crowded. Uh, I guess at some point in time, we will need a mass transit system uh, to support the movement of people from the downtown area to the uptown area. And that will be the, perhaps subject to another uh, webinar in the future, because I guess the chamber is also looking at uh, mass transit as an option and also for you know how, how uh, the traffic situation can be improved. So I guess um, that, that that's what I could share uh, with you, and perhaps later I can answer some questions too. Thank you, uh, uh, Lawrence, for the opportunity. Thank you to the uh, you, so I've been about your cable car system, uh, if you're talking about mass transport, uh, that uh, would be a very nice opportunity to have something like that in uh, Cagayan de Oro. So I hope that uh, you can push through with this uh, forward thinking idea. And it is absolutely true that the people are moving and the uh, trends, uh, all trends actually have been accelerated uh, by this pandemic. Uh, not only people are moving out of metro cities, I'm talking about Metro Manila and Metro Cebu, many coming back from there to Cagayan and to the um, province. Uh, and also OFWs are coming back. So that opens up uh, new opportunities, uh, new uh, investors coming in, uh, and um, let's say a whole set of uh, new scenarios uh, being offered. Uh, where a new mindset, you're right, the mindset has changed, uh, more safety, people want more safety, better lifestyle, and technology is a very important part. Uh, so I would like to thank you for your uh, uh, intervention. I would like to thank you for your presentation. Uh, I hope uh, your uh, uh, parks uh, can be open soon again, because we really miss to go to the water park and to uh, Dahilayan, for example. Uh, so um, thank you, Elfie, again, and we would like to Go to our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is uh, a woman, uh, a, a principal and lead broker of uh, Truly Wealthy Realty. Her name is Alex Zeta. I think uh, many of you have uh, seen her uh, on social media because uh, she is uh, a very tech friendly broker. I think she is the one who is spearheading this in Cagayan de Oro. 
Um, since 2011, she is a real estate broker. You will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you have a TV program, a blogger. You're a brilliant real estate professional using technology. And you're going to tell us a little bit more about uh, Cagayan de Oro and if uh, real estate is uh, thriving and is an opportunity and where the best locations are. Alex, uh, welcome. Are you there? Alex? Uh, I don't seem to uh, see her, Alex. Maybe she is not here. Okay, maybe we can get her a little later if she had problems with the connection. Uh, let's uh, pass on to our next speaker, uh, Roma Lonati. I hope uh, you are uh, here. Romola. Hi, I am okay, here. Very good. So let me introduce you. I was actually fearful that uh, we have uh, a technical problem, but no, you're there. So Romola Valentino Nati is an Italian architect and businessman. He is the executive chairman and CEO of IDC, Italpinas Development Corporation, a publicly listed Italian Filipino real estate development company established in 2009. Specialized in designing and developing sustainable buildings in emerging cities in the Philippines. He is the mastermind of Primavera Residences and Primavera City in Uptown Cagayan de Oro. He is a top leader for green living and sustainable development in the Philippines and has been invited as a keynote speaker at numerous conferences, among which the Sustainability Summit Asia organized by The Economist and in Singapore at the Energy Exchange Forum organized by the Building Construction Authority. Furthermore, Architect Nati was featured in National Geographic magazine Asia and in uh, Bloomberg Philippines. Romolo, uh, welcome, the floor is yours. Hi, hi, Lawrence. Thank you very much for inviting me and then, of course, for uh, organizing such uh, interesting event. I also would like to thank all the participants and the presenters. Uh, I have been listening to the pre presentations uh, and uh, I found both of them extremely interesting. Um, so uh, let me share my screen and so that I can show uh, some of the projects that we have done and the experience of uh, IDC. Okay. So as you mentioned, uh, uh, IDC was uh, uh, incorporated in uh, 2009 and in 2015, we were able to get listed in the Philippine Stock Exchange. Uh, we are a member of the Philippine Green Building Council and the US Green Building Council and uh, uh, all our projects are rated green by uh, using the, the green rating system called EDGE, which is developed by the International Finance, Corporate, Finance Corporation, which is uh, uh, the arm of uh, uh, the World Bank Group. Uh, we were able to secure several awards thanks to our hard work and, and forward-looking forward approach to real estate and sustainable development. And as you mentioned, my, my, my partner, Giorgio Levis, and myself, we were featured in National Geographic Asia for the work that IDC did uh, in real estate and the innovation that we try to bring into real estate. <clears throat> uh, this is myself. I am an architect by profession. Uh, and uh, my partner, Giorgio Leviste, who is Filipino yes. and is a, is a lawyer uh, by education. Uh, just a few words about our unique value propositions, because that's what uh, really determine our, I would say, uh, success in the real estate industry scenario in the Philippines. <clears throat> we are totally committed to uh, passive green design, so we use passive green strategies uh, to develop our projects, and I will show later during this presentation some slides that better can uh, let the, 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 the um, uh, attendees understand how we conceptualize and develop our projects. We are interested in emerging cities in the Philippines. 
we think that uh, uh, the, there is a, a huge, uh, uh, there are huge opportunities in many cities in the Philippines, and Cagayan is one of them. Actually, one of the most promising, uh, if uh, I may say it's so. And we are interested uh, to the rising middle class and uh, more refining, uh, more refined middle class uh, in the country. Um, just a few words about uh, the passive green design. <clears throat> so what we do is uh, we collect data from uh, uh, wet, uh, wet, uh, data about the weather condition of the place where the buildings is going to be built. So we gather data uh, about the, the, the wind speed, the wind direction, the, 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 the temperature, uh, also the rain, et cetera. And we <clears throat> integrate this data using parametric software. We come up with a 3D model, which represents the best solution given our requirements. This is uh, a slide that shows some of uh, the analysis that we do, weather analysis. Actually, this, uh, this uh, slide uh, refers to the analysis of uh, data for the design of Primavera City. We can see the wind speed, wind direction on the left side and upper right, we have the temperature and uh, on the bottom we have uh, on the left, the wind analysis, uh, I mean, and, and, and how the building uh, react to the wind. And, and on the right side, the sun path. It's very important to analyze the sun path uh, um, in, in, in the place where the building will have to be built so that we can create uh, uh, shading uh, to reduce uh, temperature inside the building. I also would like to show some video that can better let uh, the audience understand how we work. So this is a software that helps us uh, to locate the building in the best uh, uh, possible uh, position so that we can increase natural light and natural ventilation and also reduce the shadow of every building towards the, the, closer, the closer one. And uh, instead, uh, we have also software that can uh, let, uh, understand, let us understand how buildings uh, behave uh, when there is a strong wind. And uh, we also are able to increase the internal natural ventilation when the wind uh, uh, is uh, not very strong. Last video shows the way we are able to increase natural light, but with, without increasing the temperature inside the unit, creating louvers, ledges, and cantilever structures that create shadow uh, so that we have indirect light and not increasing temperature. Um, why are we interested in emerging cities? And here, uh, Cagayani really uh, plays um, um, a very important role because to me, it's a peg, it's a, it's a role model of uh, what's happening in the Philippines. If you consider that uh, there were only uh, 18 million people living in the Philippines in the uh, 1950s, and only 1.5 million were living in Metro Manila, we would be impressed to see that in 2019, more than 100 million people were the population in the Philippines and a huge number of people, around 14, 15 million, even more live in Metro Manila. This was the, uh, due to the uh, aggressive migration in the past year from the provinces to the main city, Metro Manila, but this created uh, a lot of uh, negative side effects, which are visible for people living in Metro Manila, like myself. Um, we have uh, um, a traffic, pollution, and an increase of uh, 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 cost of life. So what we anticipated back in 2009 uh, was what we call the centrifugal migration, means that people, not only Filipino, but also OFWs and also uh, foreigners, uh, would start to think, to go, uh, to, look, to look for opportunities in the provinces uh, where uh, opportunities are unlocking. Um, so this, uh, this new uh, trend obviously make uh, uh, the necessity to, for those, uh, to, to produce a, a quality real estate products for those uh, uh, interested people. Um, so why, why are we so interested in the uh, rising and I would say uh, more refined middle class in the country? Because the, the population in the Philippines is still growing and what is growing is also the middle class. When we say middle class, we are talking about uh, uh, lower, uh, mid and upper middle class. Um, these, uh, these people, uh, I mean, we, we are, I'm also part of this, uh, of this group of people. 
uh, what are we looking for? We are looking for um, an, an accessible product, real estate, better if it's sustainable, green, uh, better if uh, uh, it's accessible also in terms of payment scheme, uh, accessible in terms of price and accessible in terms of logistics. So th these are the, the uh, guidelines that uh, uh, in IDC we follow. And it's also interesting uh, to know for uh, uh, also other developers that uh, the affordable housing demands in the country is still strong. Uh, so just to, to I mean, in, in order to go ahead with my presentation, allow me to show you the projects that we did, that we are doing, and we will, uh, and that are in the pipeline at the moment, at least the ones that uh, I can disclose. Uh, the first one is Primavera Residences, which is fully uh, completed and sold out already a few years ago, Primavera City, which instead is under construction and phase one is about to be turnover. And uh, uh, Miramonti, which is a project that uh, uh, we are now doing in, uh, in Santo Tomas Batanga, so in the island of Luzon. Primavera, which is the uh, flagship project of uh, IDC, our first project, uh, and uh, uh, so we are Obviously, we have a soft spot for Primavera uh, project in, uh, in IDC. Um, and why Cagayan de Oro? This is a question that often uh, people ask me, no? uh, why did we start in Cagayan de Oro rather than, for example, in Luzon, in Metro Manila, on the Visayas? Um, I recall very well that before in 2009, we started to develop this project. Uh, I spent more than a year going around the Philippines, really from north to the south, from east to the west. Um, I, when I visited Mindanao, actually I visited three cities, Cagayan, uh, Davao, and Jensen. Uh, all nice cities, but uh, my impression and my partner impression was that Cagayan had, the, had the, what had some characteristics that uh, were really uh, giving us an indication that it was the place to start. Uh, which are some of these, um, uh, elements of these factors. First of all, is located on the north side of Mindanao, facing the Visayas and the Luzon. So it's considered the hub of northern Mindanao. When I say the hub, it means the hub to go from the north to Mindanao and to go from Mindanao to, to the north, so to the Visayas and Luzon. If you consider that a, a big percentage, if I'm not wrong, around 70% of all agricultural products that are consumed in Luzon and Mindanao come in Luzon and Visayas come from Mindanao, you can have an idea how important it is to have an international uh, seaport and an international port in Cagayan de Oro and how strategically positioned is Cagayan. That's one of the main reasons why we started and we decided to, 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 to build in Cagayan. Uh, Cagayan is also among the fastest growing cities in the country is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, it has a, a huge uh, housing gap and it's a home of more than 20,000 OFWs. And OFWs uh, represent a big chunk of clients for our company, but for also for other real estate companies. On top of that, Mindanao uh, is, uh, has a presence of several multinational companies. And uh, Mindanao and Cagayan above is the, is the city of uh, golden friendship. And that's really true. I mean, that's not only a, a, a banner uh, or a tagline, of course it is, but is it really true? So I really think that doing business must be profitable, but also must be a pleasure. I mean, you need to like uh, to do business with the people that will contribute to the growth of your company and to the, 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 the success of your projects. And even up to now, after I've been in the Philippines for more than 13 years, I can say that People in Cagayan are special. Uh, people, I'm not talking only about, of course, uh, people that are working in the company, uh, all stakeholders. So partners, clients, brokers, banks, LGUs. Uh, it's really a unique, micro, uh, uh, a unique uh, ecosystem. Um, not that in the other, in the other places in, in the country, uh, 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 they are not, uh, of course, uh, very good people and efficient LGUs, but in my experience, Cagayan, it's really a role model. From my point of view, I'm, I, I am going even farther, not only for the Philippines, but even for developed country, uh, Cagayan could represent uh, a role model. So uh, the project is located Primavera Residences and also Primavera City are located in uptown Cagayan. 
Um, as been said just now uh, by Mr. Paras that Uptown is the place. Yes, Uptown is the place. We were lucky enough uh, uh, and uh, maybe I would say smart enough uh, to understood this one, understand this one already uh, more than 10 years ago. Uptown is the natural direction where the growth of Cagayan is going. Um, and uh, uh, it's, uh, we are located in a well-planned uh, um, um, city, uh, township, uh, developed by ICCP. And uh, uh, we are, uh, I mean, the uptown Cagayan is located uh, uh, around 110 meters above the sea level. So this uh, it creates also uh, resilience in terms of uh, uh, floods uh, uh, that uh, once in a while hit uh, downtown Cagayan. Uh, this is the project that was awarded as the best mixed use building in the Philippines in 2014. It's also edge accredited, so it's a truly green building. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, this building uh, um, embedded the, the embedded the embedded the the uh, passive green strategies that have been mentioned earlier. So what we do with the design, we increase the natural ventilation. Uh, we have an uh, uh, inner courtyard that uh, helps uh, uh, to increase this uh, natural ventilation. We ha also have uh, uh, photovoltaic panels on the rooftop. We are located just beside an SM mall. This is the view of the rooftop where we also have photovoltaic panels which produce renewable energy that is given for free to the unit owners with uh, obviously uh, a reduction of the power bill for the condominium corporation. This is the pool located on the third floor and also a green space located at the, at the third floor where the air comes in. Um, Primavera City is a project that follows the success of Primavera Residences. Uh, um, also, this project has been awarded at the Asia Pacific Property Award as the best mixed use building in 2017 in the Philippines. Same location, so same characteristic. Uh, and this is the project uh, which is going to be developed in four phases. Chita Verde is completed, and we are just waiting uh, for the release of some uh, final uh, uh, permits from the from the city, uh, Cita Bella is under construction and Cita Grande and Cita Alta are under the permitting stage. Allow me to show you, to share with you a video of uh, Primavera City so that better you can understand how the building has been conceptualized. <laughs> Um, just uh, uh, before I, I end my presentation, uh, after the success and the experience that we had had in in Cagayan, 
and we are still having, uh, we decided to uh, uh, develop in, uh, in uh, Luzon with a project called Miramonti. Also, this project has been awarded. Uh, and uh, uh, this project uh, wouldn't be would have been possible uh, without the experience, as I said, uh, that we 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 learned uh, we had in uh, Cagayan. Uh, the project is doing extremely well. It's located uh, also in a very interesting area uh, in Batangas, uh, surrounded by industrial parks and very well connected to Metro Manila uh, and Metro Batangas. Um, let me finish. I just removed the. Um, uh, okay. Um, before I finish, I, I I would like to just to share a, a few thought a, a thought about what's happening in the country. Now, as uh, Emilio Para said, and also uh, Neda, uh, Miss Yvonne said, uh, the pandemic hit the country, but. Uh, uh, also uh, created new tendency uh, and a new awareness about uh, uh, not only real estate man in, in, in the market by different services and products. Uh, we can cl clearly see that uh, uh, the, the consumers are more interested in uh, uh, sustainable and green products and services. Uh, and if in, in this regard, Cagayan is extremely well positioned uh, because it's close uh, to a huge uh, uh, area where uh, there is production of agricultural products. Uh, it's also surrounded by natural beauty. And uh, uh, so the, the entire area of Misami, so region X, uh, is an ex extremely very well positioned. Uh, Cagayan is a, a even better positioned in within the, the region X and Uptown uh, is uh, uh, the best location from my point of view, uh, from our experience in Cagayan itself. So um, like to say, uh, uh, sometimes bad news, bad experience also produces opportunities. And I think Cagayan has now uh, great opportunities to really re-establish his uh, uh, um, position as the place to be, the place to invest, uh, and so thank you very much for uh, organizing again, Lawrence, this uh, uh, event. And I hope we can be part of next event in the future. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you, Romolo. Thank you for your presentation. I mean, uh, people know very well that uh, you have given Cagayan de Oro a um, landmark, actually two landmarks with your buildings. In fact, uh, uh, Primavera City and Primavera residences are both uh, very well known and uh, admired by everyone. Uh, so let's go back uh, and uh, let's see if we can hear uh, Alex uh, this time. Alex, Hi, Lawrence. Are you there? Hi, can you hear me now? Oh, yes. And here you are. Welcome, Alex. I have okay. briefly introduced you before. I don't know if uh, you uh, have followed uh, what I have been saying about you. I hope that was correct. Yeah, yeah. I was able to hear it, but you couldn't hear me at the time. Okay, fantastic. We're very happy to have you here because uh, I remember when you started, uh, you started uh, also selling Primavera residences. You were a very active broker. Uh, since then, uh, I think that was 2011, and uh, you had a fantastic uh, career so far, and you're uh, really bubbling, as uh, I would say. Why don't you tell us uh, some more about yourself? Okay. Oh, can I share my screen? Yes, absolutely. Okay, just share it for a bit. Okay. So hello everyone, I am Alex and today I will be sharing with you the growth opportunities of the real estate industry in CDO through the years, current market updates and investment opportunities. So as Lawrence mentioned, I've been in this industry for the past 10 years. We actually met in Primavera residences uh, 10 years ago, right? That was such a long time ago. So 
being in this industry for that span of time, I have really witnessed the growth and progress of Cagayan de Oro. Take, for example, the uptown area. So residential real estate prices uptown have tripled over the past decade. 10 years ago, a lot in Savior Estates or Pueblo de Oro subdivisions would cost about six to 8,000 per square. So now the rate for residential lots in the uptown area is 15 to 20,000 per square. And rich lots in Savior Estates can go as high as 25,000 per square if there are even any lots that are available. So also for golf estates, fairway lots there are about 20,000 per square also. And when it comes also to commercial real estate, the, their value has quadrupled in the past decade. So back in 2011, lots in Pueblo Business Park were selling at 8,000 per square, and now they are at 40,000 per square. So aside from this, we have seen many real estate developments in Cagayan de Oro, such as the opening of Centrio Mall back in 2012, SNR in 2016, and SM Premier in 2017. There have been several project launches as well from various developers. This year alone, despite the pandemic, the real estate market has stayed very resilient and Cagayan de Oro has had four project launches in 2021 alone. So let me give you a brief run through of these launches for just for this year. So first is a house and lot project in Agusan by Cebu Land Masters. So Valmir Heights is an eight hectare development, which has about 518 house and lot units. So it's a 2 billion project and it's now almost sold out. So they have only about 6% remaining in their inventory and they've already increased their prices six times since launching. So if you invested in a unit in December of 2020, when they launched, you would now be able to enjoy a 600,000 appreciation in your asset. So it has about 21% already appreciation. So one reason why I see that this development really sold out fast is one is the location. Aside from the uptown Cagayan de Oro, which I will be also discussing in a while, Agusan is an up and coming area. So it's about 40 minutes drive to hospitals and malls. And it's also a good location because there are so many industrial um, establishments in the area. And there are not a lot of developers who are developing in that area, the Tablon area, the Agusan area. So there are so many, like there's Nestle located there. Um, Fividec is located there, which is the biggest industrial park in the Philippines. So, and also their payment schemes, very affordable. It's only about six to 10,000 per month for their units. So another development near that area is Bayview Heights by Alveo. So this is the location. So there are both developments are nearby. So it's a 114 mixed use development along the Tablon Highway. So it's the first project of Alveo here in Cagayan de Oro. And one thing to note is Cagayan de Oro is the only city in the Philippines that has all five brands of Ayala outside Metro Manila. So the thing though with Alveo is, although it's a, it's a good project, their selling prices, which is about 28,000 to 31,000 per square, is currently above the market value of the lots here in Cagayan de Oro because uptown lots are about between 15 to 20,000 per square while in the downtown area, in the older subdivisions located in Gusa, it's about 8,000 per square. And the next project is by WECOM. It's a house and lot project in Kanitoan area. So they offer houses between 2.4 to 7 million. And one of the first developers to offer smart devices in their turnover unit. And then lastly is a project by A. Brown called the Shop Houses. So as you can see, this is a screenshot of the developments in the Taguano area, which is also located in Uptown Cagayan de Oro. So the Uptown area is not actually, um, it's, it's an informal address because when you go to Uptown, there are so many barangays there. We have Carmen, Upper Carmen, Upper Canitoan, Lumbia. So we generally just call the area Uptown Cagayan de Oro. And this is one development located in that area. 
So it's the first uh, of its kind. This project is the first of its kind in CDO because they are launching commercial residential um, projects. So the first floor has to be used as for commercial space, while the second and third floor can either be for residential use, or you can also use, put it up as an office space or use it for commercial use as well. So now let's go to the Uptown Cagayan de Oro. So as the previous speakers mentioned, Up Uptown Cagayan de Oro is really the hot spot right now when it comes to real estate investing. And there are so many developments in the Uptown area. So currently the center there is Pueblo de Oro Business Park, but there are four new townships that are up and coming. So aside from Pueblo Business Park, we have Central Uptown Business District, Pontefino Estates with 23 hectares, South Ridge has about 40 hectares, Orchard District has 43 hectares. And of course, there's also the ongoing construction of Gaisano Mall, which is right in front of Gran Europa. And also just last August 20, Sibulan Masters and Xavier University signed the MOA to start the development of the Campus of the Future. So that's what they call it, the campus of the future by end of next year. So they will be converting Manresa Farm into a mixed-use development. So it's going to be called Manresa Town and Manresa Campus. And this will be three times the size of their campus in Divisoria. So the new campus aims to construct a state-of-the-art facility that will take learning into the 21st century. So it will be a 21st hectare, 21 hectare project that will feature modern facilities and they will be calling it Manresa Campus. And then for the Manresa Town, it's a 14.3 hectare property. So the goal there is to integrate seamlessly the two developments. So once this is done, we, uh, their target, the development will be per phase. So phase one will be starting on end of 2022 and their target for the turnover for phase one of both Manresa Town and Manresa Campus will be in 2024. So for those of you who have property in the Uptown area, then congratulations, your investment will appreciate even more with this new development that's coming along. Also, Uptown area has the most number of subdivisions in CDO so far. So they have currently 44 subdivisions Uptown, 40 are already sold out, and four, four of those subdivisions are still pre-selling. There's also a national developer that will be launching a new project, Uptown, a new condo project. So it's going to be 14 four-story buildings. And we also have pre-selling projects. Currently, the Uptown market, the Uptown area has eight condominium projects. Six of those are sold out and two are still pre-selling. So architect Nati mentioned that Primavera City uh, mentioned from a very primavera city a while ago so that's one of the condominiums that are still pre-selling in the uptown area while there's also another one pre-selling while there's one sub I mean one condominium development that will be launched this year so another thing that i want to discuss is how has the pandemic affected the real estate market so although the real estate market has stayed resilient throughout the pandemic it has still been affected and there are three main effects that we in the real estate industry has experienced. So first, it has slowed down the pace of development. So although it did not totally stop, it just had slowed down because developers are highly dependent on different government institutions because they have to get permits and approvals before they can officially launch a project. But because of because many government agencies have been on skeletal workforce, cities are on and off MECQ or ECQ. So this has made getting permits and approvals slower than usual. So although the real estate development has not stopped, it has slowed down. And another thing, uh, second effect is it, it has led to, the pandemic has led to an increase in the price of construction materials, especially last year when COVID was still starting and almost every city was on lockdown. So the price of construction materials doubled. So for the first few months, some developers have had trouble sourcing materials because there was a logistics problem. But this year, everybody, uh, the, the logistics problem has already been solved since we are now operating in the new normal. So everybody was able to adjust. And then third, Another difference is increase of sales through assumption. So 
there has been an increase of sale through assumption by the sellers because for buyers who want to invest in a pre-selling project, they first have to pay the equity over a period of time. So usually equity is payable over 12 to 24 months or even more. So now since the pandemic has squeezed a lot of people, some now have trouble pushing through with the sales. So they're having a hard time hitting the monthly payments. So what some buyers are forced to do is they are they have to sell their investment at, at market value or even below market value to liquidate their assets so they can use their money for something else. Like for instance, I had a client who bought a condo unit, a pre-selling condo unit two years ago. It was priced at 1.8 million then. But now since she, since she's having trouble meeting the monthly the monthly mortgage, she had to let her unit go. She was able to sell it at 1.9. So even though the value of that unit now is 2.5, she had to sell it in a way at a loss below market value because she needed to liquidate fast. So all in all, although there has been some changes, the real estate market has been affected, it has stayed very resilient. Even during last year when COVID hit the country, um, one of the developers sold out their condominium project in 2020. So that was at the height of COVID where everyone was still afraid, everyone was still getting used to the pandemic. And even I, as a real estate broker and also a realty owner, I expected for our sales to go down when the pandemic was still starting. But the opposite actually happened. Like last year, we hit, like I, we hit the highest number in our sales ever since we started, and it was during COVID. And now we are on track to doubling those numbers for this year. So now let's go to available investment opportunities in real estate. So there are four main areas that investors can focus on when it comes to investing if you really want value for money. So first is pre-selling projects. We have pre-selling house and lots or condos such as Primavera City. So developers usually start at the lowest price upon launching. That's why for buyers or investors who want to buy at the lowest price, when it comes to pre-selling projects, you have to get a unit upon launching because that's at the lowest price. And then from there, developers will usually increase their pricing later on. So they will be increasing around usually three to four times before the turnover. As the project progresses, they have a schedule for the price increase, which is usually either based on the development phase or the number of units that are already sold. And then second, you can also, as an investor, choose to focus on units that are for assume that are on rush sale. Because when you, like I mentioned a while ago, when you invest in a pre-selling unit, you're still paying for the equity. So there are times when buyers will be strapped for cash and they need to liquidate, they need to sell their assets. So this can also be a good deal, just like my client who invested in a condo, even though she bought it at 1.82 two years ago, and it's now worth 2.5, she eventually sold it at 1.9 because she was already in a hurry. So if buyers are in a hurry, I mean, if sellers are in a hurry, they will usually let the unit go at a low, at a price that is lower than market value. Another thing to note are foreclosed properties. So foreclosed properties are those uh, real estate are real estate investments that have been foreclosed on by the bank in the in, in the event that the buyer or the borrower defaults on their payment. So they are usually priced below market value based on uh, my observation in the existing inventory of foreclosed properties. There, there aren't a lot of foreclosed properties in CDO because we are a smaller city compared to, let's say, Manila or Davao. They have a bigger inventory of foreclosed properties. But you can really be able to see a lot, you will see a lot of um, good good investments when it comes to foreclosed properties, but it's just it's a matter of it's a matter of speed. Like you have to check the inventory periodically. So you will be able to see if something good comes up. So the banks usually have a website where they just post their foreclosed properties there and you can make an offer. You, most of the time they will prefer um, cash offers. Some they have, banks have different have different ways to dispose of their foreclosed properties. Some they just put it up for sale and they get the highest offer. Sometimes they go through bidding. 
So also um, in 2020 and 2021, I'm expecting a lot of foreclosed properties to be on the market. But usually once a property gets foreclosed, the, the borrower has one year to redeem their property. So if a property gets foreclosed in 2020, they have the whole year of around 2021 to redeem it. So the, the properties that were foreclosed in 2020 will be available in 2022. And those that were foreclosed in 2021 will be available in 2023. So if you're looking for a good buy, most likely in 2022 or 2023, you will be able to see several foreclosed properties on the market. And then lastly, uh, properties on rush sale. So investors can also check out the properties that are on rush sale. Motivated sellers will want to really sell their property below market price if they're in a hurry for some reason, like if they need the money or they need to move, or one reason is if they are getting divorced, stuff like that. So they want to dispose the property as soon as possible, and they will they are okay with getting a price for their property property that's below market value. So that wraps up my presentation for today. All in all, real estate is a great investment. As long as you're really clear about what your goals are and also check your financials before diving in because it is a long-term investment. As they say, the best investment on earth is earth itself. Good afternoon. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we know that you have a long-standing experience in real estate and uh, you have been driving uh, a lot of investors to invest, especially in uptown, let's say the best part uh, at the moment to invest in Cagayan de Oro. Yes, so it's the BGC. Again. It's the BGC of Cagayan de Oro, uptown area. Absolutely. And we will have a chance to ask more questions in the Q&A later. I need to speed up a little bit because I know that architect Nati needs to go. So that brings us to our next speaker because uh, Alex mentioned bank. So today we have uh, among ourselves uh, a uh, representative from uh, um, one of the biggest uh, banks in the Philippines. So let me... Uh, here we go. Uh, Mr. Herbert Vincent Duason, he is the Vice President and Retail Mortgage Head of BPI Family Savings Bank. He has 24 years of banking experience, mainly in retail mortgage, loans, marketing, and non-life insurance. Currently the Vice President and Retail Mortgage Head of BPI Family Savings Bank managing one of the biggest retail loan portfolios in the country. Um, with over 135 billion in housing loans. So we may ask him later if there is a lot of foreclosed properties. One, two international awards in 2015 as the best retail mortgage bank by Alpha Southeast Asia and best in home loans by the Asian banker. He earned both his master's in business administration and bachelor of arts major in psychology degrees from De La Salle University, Manila. Ladies and gentlemen, the floor goes to Mr. Herbert Vincent Duasson. Are you there? Yes, sir. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, you know, actually, this, this is an excellent segue to Alex's uh, presentation. Uh, we, she presented the opportunities that people can take advantage, and then we will be the enabler for people to take advantage of these opportunities. Uh, now, I'll, allow me to proceed with my presentation. You know, uh, well, firstly, I, I'd like to thank everyone for the opportunity to speak uh, in front of you uh, this afternoon. Uh, we in BPA Family Bank always make sure that the customer is our top priority from the beginning up to the end of all our products and services. With the constant threat of COVID-19, I am sure all of you agree that it is incumbent to, for all of us to look after our own health. Are we as healthy as we can be, especially do, during this pandemic? Are we listening to what our bodies are telling us despite the demands of our work and businesses. You know, we in BPI Family Savings Bank 
remain to be committed to our number one focus. And th that is to make sure that we look after the health of our customers. Let me share with you the acronym and the key words that best represent our strategy on our lo housing loan customer focus. Let's start with H for heart. We see to it that we know and understand our customers' hearts, what they truly love, hate, and need. Our offerings in DPI Family Savings Bank are needs-based. In a survey conducted by NEDA, we found out that majority or 79% of Filipino families aspire for a simple and comfortable life. This means having enough for their daily needs and having savings to pay for their unexpected expenses, support retirement, and of course, it includes the aspiration to purchase a car and build or purchase a house. Hence, our mission is to enable Filipino families progress in life and believe in their ability to achieve their dreams today rather than tomorrow, sooner rather than later, in the here and now rather than the far future. Moreover, this is why BPI Family Bank is here to provide our customers need. May, may it be for purchasing, acquisition, or constructing your dream home, renovating or expanding your existing house, or other funding needs for the family. So going back to acquisition, we finance the acquisition of residential properties, such as house and lot, condominiums, townhouse, or residential lots. It is actually very simple and easy to apply. Here are some general application requirements, very simple. First, a duly accomplished application form and just one valid government issued ID. If you are employed, we only require one of the following, the latest certificate of employment indicating the position, tenure and salary, latest ITR, latest three months pay slip. If the source of income is business, we require the following, the latest ITR with audited FS, latest six months bank statement of the business, list of trade references such as your suppliers or customers, DTI registration for sole proprietorship, and for corporations, the usual corporate papers such as SEC registration, article of articles of incorporation and bylaws, and the latest GIS. For the collateral documents, since people will be purchasing an Ital Pinas development property, we will only require a copy of the endorsement letter or official computation sheet from IDC. Now we move on to the next acronym, which is E for experience. We create exceptional personalized experiences for your customers. Simply delivering what our customers expect will make us lose customers to our competitors who wow them. We want to exceed your expectations through the various stages, which means that from the time we offer the loan solution until the completion of the requirements and even after the loan has been booked. That is why when the pandemic hit last year, we shuffled our teams to best serve our customers. We implemented what we called our in-source management team that entailed moving officers from other divisions to our customer service who were inundated with calls and queries. This was especially at the height of Bayanihan's one and two. Now, let me share with you our customer experience or journey when you avail of a BPI family back housing loans. First, you just have to completely fill out an application form and submit it together with the requirements of our BPI family back housing loan officer. Wait for the evaluation and decision, which takes just five banking days for borrowers who are employed and 10 to 15 banking days for borrowers whose source of income is business. Once approved, your loan officer will email you the details of the loan approval, including the post-approval requirements. If you agree with the approved terms and conditions, you may now proceed with the signing of the loan documents at the BPI Family Bank Retail Lending Center or at the nearest BPI or BPI Family Bank branch. After signing and compliance of the post-approval requirements, we will issue the bank guarantee to IDC 
and IDC, in response, will send us their letter of undertaking to deliver to us your title within an agreed period. With that commitment or undertaking from IDC, we will now process the release of your loan and the proceeds of which, which will be paid to Italpinas Development to close your outstanding balance. IDC will then turn over the property to you and you may now have the keys to your brand new home. We are pleased to inform everyone that we offer special financing housing loan rates to IDC clients. Qualified borrowers will be given 5.5% fixed for one to three years. This is, if we will compare this, if you will walk into any of our branches, this is what they will tell you. Our published rate is at 6.25% for one year and 6.75 for three years. But we are offering, offering this to our IDC clients for only 5.5. This will also be at 6.5% fixed for four to five years versus our published rate of 7.25%, provided that the loan is released on or before October 31 this year. Now we move on to the next acronym, which is A for Agility. We make sure that we are quick to respond to you, especially with today's hyperconnected landscape. Now is the time to revolutionize what you value most about us. We want to make everything faster, easier, and affordable. Easier because we rolled out one, more lending programs that addresses numerous documentary requirements. Faster through our depositor lending programs and conditional approval. So if you are a depositor, you would really enjoy a distinct edge. In addition, we designed a virtual appraisal tool to assist in overall credit evaluation process, given the travel restrictions in certain areas. So if let's say uh, a client lives in a far-flung area, we are now able to place this virtually so we can now turn around more quickly. Uh, banks offer different options, terms, rates, different charges, and which is why it is important to choose a bank that would suit your needs, that would give you affordable, flexible payment terms. And because of this, we would like to introduce to you BPI Family Bank's Step Up Play Plan. What is this? We are the only bank offering this housing loan variant. This is the first and only lo loan solution that enables an individual to plan and control the amount of your monthly payments every year. This makes housing loan more affordable for everyone. Those of you who are not confident about, will they be able to sustain the monthly amortizations during the first few years of the loan? This could be the solution for you. Because compared to a regular housing loans, the step up pay plans monthly amortization on the first year is actually 30% lower versus the regular housing loan. Then it will gradually step up every year as your income also increases. Our loan officers will be happy to discuss this with you in detail if you have questions. Now, we move on to our next uh, acronym, which is L for location. We need to be where our customers are, physical, digital, or better yet, go digital. At the time when customers are wary about leaving their homes to protect the safety of their loved ones, the online channel provides convenience. With just a few taps of your fingertips, you can submit your application, even your loan requirements online. For those who prefer face-to-face -face discussions, loan centers remain open to serve your needs. You may also connect with us through our official Facebook account and website. Your dedicated housing loan team is now shown on your screens. Mark, Lemon, and JSL are at your disposal for any concerns or clarifications or questions. Now for our last acronym, which is T for touch points. Our goal is to give you exceptional experiences across all touch points of your loan journey. We value your experience. 
in each of our touch points, our pre-touch or before you even meet us, when you Google us or read up uh, about us, or when you see our offices uh, from afar, first touch or your first actual encounter, core touch or how we continuously service your needs and last touch or the final encounter where we should make you want to keep coming back to us. Our loan services team also launched Bella or the BPI Family Bank e-loans service advisor. Uh, e-loans advisor. This allows our clients to talk to BPI Family Bank personnel via Zoom or WebEx during negotiations or in addressing your loan concerns. Similarly, the team launched BPI online appointment for loan services where clients can schedule your appointments before even going to our office to pick up your loan related documents. For customers whose units are ready for turnover or due for turnover, we designed a webinar to equip you with financing needs for the next steps of your home journey. All of these ensure that we maintain touch points with our customers and provide new ones making it easy as possible to address your loan concerns. We are also rolling out an automated loan origination system that will provide real-time SMS updates on your every step of the loan process. And finally, H for hero. A hero is one who is committed in providing excellent customer service and causing positive change. BPI and BPI Family Bank are driven by purpose of making owning your dream home easy and right. With heart, experience, agility, location, and touch points, BPI and BPI Family Bank will strive to be a community of heroes who will help make Filipino dreams of owning a home achievable. Now in the time of pandemic and in the decades to come beyond the pandemic. We look forward to serving you and we are committed to making your housing loan journey and owning your dream home a rewarding experience. Thank you and take care everyone. Thank you Herbert uh, for your precious insight. I'm sure some of our viewers will be interested to contact you. Now we have uh, a very special moment before we proceed to do the Q&A. And uh, I can guarantee you that in the Q&A, you will discover some interesting or you will have some interesting answers because we will ask uh, architect Nati about construction updates. So I would like to invite uh, Ms. Gladys Echano, who is the sales and marketing manager of Itabinas Development Corporation. Are you there, Gladys? You have a special uh, surprise today, correct? Yes, hello, good afternoon, everyone. So Lawrence, thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you, to share with everyone our special promo. So just in time for the price increase, just in time also for the upcoming development in Uptown, and of course, for our, for our own um, price increase adjustment, for our price increase this coming September 15. So, um, starting today up to September 15, we are offering zero reservation fee. So normally reservation fee is 15,000, but um, starting today up to 15, we will waive that off. And the, the interested buyer will um, start right away the amortization. So for Chita Bella, for as low as 6,500, um, they, they, then they, they can already start that first amortization payment. So no more reservation fee, but this is only up to September 15. So that's it. I will not take any longer your time. So thank you for the opportunity. And so for details, you may contact your agents or you can contact directly us. So thank you. Thank you, Gladys, uh, for this uh, special surprise. And uh, now we can go to our next uh, session.
that is actually um, our Q and A session. Uh, let me invite immediately architect Nati uh, for a special question. Uh, architect, we had this question coming up also among our viewers. What is the construction update for Primavera City? Uh, is handover near? Hi, hi, Lawrence. Uh, thank you for these questions. Actually, I am uh, more than happy to inform that uh, the building is completed. Uh, we already did uh, all the preliminary required uh, uh, inspection. We had the inspection by the relevant authorities and we are just uh, waiting for the final uh, um, uh, permits, which uh, should be issued hopefully extremely soon, very soon. Uh, and uh, um, as a matter of fact, Gladys, together with the operation group, are already planning for the turnover uh, process, which will uh, uh, be done in, uh, in phases, obviously, uh, floor by floor. So for any additional, more detailed uh, um, information, please uh, uh, contact Gladys. And uh, hopefully, we will do a very nice celebration and an and event because we are all looking forward uh, uh, for the turnover of the project. And uh, as you know, Lawrence, because you know the building very well, we have uh, an extremely beautiful, super beautiful uh, event uh, uh, area, uh, open and indoor, uh, outdoor and indoor on the uh, 11th floor uh, with an amazing view of the bay. So I really look forward to celebrate this uh, uh, great uh, uh, achievement for us, for which we have been working uh, hardly for the last uh, few years. As a, uh, there was a delay. I mean, I do not, uh, I cannot uh, uh, hide that. The delay was due also the COVID, uh, the restriction, which made uh, quite uh, difficult uh, to complete the building uh, within the time frame, even if we are within the time frame because uh, uh, for the permits we have from uh, HLURB, which is now Dashwood, uh, we, had, we need to complete the building before 2022 and it will be completed in 2021. So uh, look forward for uh, good news uh, shortly and uh, okay, looking forward to celebrate this uh, uh, again, big event for us, big milestone. So thank you, Lawrence, and thank you for the person who asked this question. Okay, thank you. I know you have to go now, so you will be excused. Uh, and we will just do a short uh, Q&A with uh, the other panelists uh, and uh, speakers. Uh, the first one uh, that I would like to ask uh, is uh, uh, Ms. Mayla uh, Carino, are you with us? Uh, maybe okay. I can answer one question, Lawrence, because... Uh, okay, uh, just our... one question then. Because we have been seeing the growth of uh, Cagayan de Oro that is happening actually in all directions. So, and uh, we have also heard that uh, one of the hotspots for investments, let's say the EGC of uh, Cagayan de Oro, is uh, uptown. So how do you see uptown and even further on uh, uh, being... Uh, Development. I'm talking about uh, uptown and Lumpia and maybe beyond. Yeah, our our intent is really to ensure no balanced development uh, so that other areas of uh, northern Mindanao can really benefit from uh, from the fruits of development. As we all know, uh, our aspiration is really to attain sustainable and inclusive development. And when we say inclusive development, it is a development where everyone benefits. So certainly uh, we want to bring uh, benefit not only to Uptown, Cagayan de Oro, but also to other areas of, uh, of Region 10. And uh, certainly uh, there are several uh, projects of government that are pipelined in the Uptown area and uh, going towards Bukidnon. And uh, this will surely bring or spur development in that area. That's not something that we can stop. Okay, we have seen, in fact, uh, development starting, uh, as I said before, towards uh, yes. Ligan, towards uh, the opposite direction, uh, Ingoc or Balingasag. And so it's really something very exciting that everyone is involved. 
So thank you again for your uh, precious comments. I really appreciate your presence and I will let you go now too. I know you thank are you. busy. Thank you so much. Our secretary is actually here. Okay. That's why. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much again. Salamat, Lawrence. Thank you. Okay, so the next question, maybe for uh, LP Palas, uh, uh, we have uh, heard about uh, the moving to the province uh, movement. So basically, the what was it called? Uh, um, Balik Provincia, I think uh, it was called some time ago. Just prior to the pandemic. And uh, this trend has been accelerated uh, through this COVID. So people have been running away from uh, Metro Manila, one, running away even from Metro Cebu. And many Cagayanans uh, and even non-Cagayanans have uh, immigrated uh, in Region 10 and uh, also Bukidon. Uh, uh, so Cagayan de Oro, Bukidon has been quite a recipient for these people. So have you noticed this trend also? Uh, the question is, uh, uh, what's my comment regarding migration, reverse migration? Yes, yes. From Manila. Well, it, it's, it's, it's really happening right now, uh, especially that you find Metro Manila to be, uh, you know, you, uh, the ECQ, uh, strict lockdowns there. Uh, the people that have, you know, that come from the provinces are now seeking, you know, uh, cleaner pastures in a way uh, because, you know, the Manila is really a hellhole. Uh, you know, if, if I may speak about myself, you know, I have a condominium uh, in uh, Resorts World in uh, Pasay. It's quite convenient because it's near the Naia too. So, you know, you can almost walk to the terminal. And that was the very reason why uh, uh, we bought that condominium about uh, less than 10 years ago. Uh, because with the intent of commuting between Cagayan and Manila, uh, especially uh, in, in the normal times, um, I would have you know, a few meetings in Manila, a few board meetings in Manila. So, so there is no more opportunity now to maintain that condominium. Like our condominium, uh, the last time we stepped inside there was December of 2019. Can you imagine that the, the condominium without any occupant is going to be uh, decrepit <laughs> by the time you visit because it will be full of bugs and dust and what have you. And, and we may not even know whether there are leaks inside or whatever. So. And I'm just one of them. And I, I'm sure there are a lot of Cagayanons uh, who are maintaining townhouses and condominiums in Manila. And there is no more, you know, with online education, uh, with all your board meetings, you know, online, there's no more incentive to maintain uh, property in Manila. And that's why I think, uh, you know, I'm really about to sell the property there. So that maybe put the investment back here and back home, no? Where uh, perhaps maybe the new Primavera City would be a, a good place to, you know, move that investment. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, there, there's really a, a a migration now to the to the clean and green countryside, uh, especially that, for example, Cagayan de Oro is really well. Uh, the hot spot in Northern Mindanao it, with all the amenities, with everything here, the malls, the real estate development, condominiums, what have you, resorts and limitless adventure and lifestyle destinations. You so know, you don't have to go to Manila. No yeah. more. Yeah. Well, Anna, you know, that, Manila. that's why, you know, for me, it's a really exciting time after this pandemic, I guess. We are reconfiguring even our parks uh, to be able to adapt to the new normal. So, so the exciting part also is uptown Cagayan de Oro, you know, that, you know, it's not just because I have some property there also, but I'm really excited about what's going to happen uh, with all these uh, townships being built 
in a, within a radius of one or two kilometers. Uh, but I'm just afraid that, you know, the, 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 the road network or road infrastructure to the uptown area is something that needs to be improved. And I don't know whether there's a, a physical way of uh, putting additional roads there, but that's why, you know, uh, there are new uh, modern concepts of urban transit that we are looking at uh, to resolve, uh, partial, partially resolve that problem going to the uptown area. Again. Fantastic. More opportunities uh, then. I have a question here directly from Paida Kosain Sarparas. Which industry in the region then is affected most in the, this pandemic and which one is less affected? Would you like to answer that quickly? And uh, please, yep. can I repeat the question? Which industry in Region 10 is affected most in this pandemic time? And which one is less affected? Just brief. Uh, brief. Are you talking to me, uh, asking yes, me? Yes. Oh, OK. Yeah, well, uh, the least affected, I, I, I would say, would be the essential, uh, you know, essentials business. That would be food, shelter, connectivity electricity and water you know those are the essentials that uh, that people demand and and that's why you know that there is opportunity in every aspect of the essential uh, services uh, that is needed uh, and that's why you know the those essential services have not experienced a downturn during the pandemic uh, in my case for example uh, in the ICT business, our our growth has been unprecedented. You know, we we've grown by uh, at least thirty percent uh, since COVID. We thought that you know uh, that there would be uh, you know actually in the first three months of uh, twenty twenty, we really had a downturn, and because we did not know how to react to uh, to the pandemic. But now that we have adapted, we have seen the opportunity, and now you know we're spending a lot of money now to to uh, make sure that connectivity reaches the farthest part of the region. So we're, we're going even beyond Kage and the Oro. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you again for uh, being here. So let me go to the next question that is for Herbert. Uh, and uh, I saw that he actually already answered the question, but how long does it take to get a loan from BPI? I think that was the question from one of our viewers. All right. Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, you know, we, we recently, actually, we will be actively promoting it, uh, especially the, in the middle of this month. We, we, will be, we will be implementing our conditional approval program. What is this? The conditional approval program is basically will give, will give the client confidence about the ability or the, for the loan to be approved. Uh, is that a final approval? No, not yet. However, we will be basing the, 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 uh, the conditional approval on, the, on what the client has claimed in the application form. In other words, whatever they say there, we will be evaluating it. It will go through our credit scoring. And based on our credit score, if it will pass, therefore, we will be able to turn around and give back the conditional approval to the client. All the client needs to do now is just to substantiate all the claimed information written in the application form. If this is now satisfied, that the conditional approval will become a final approval. So all the, the client, all he needs to do would be just to truthfully answer or, or fill up the, 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 the form. And, and if that is substantiated, the, the conditional approval will become a final approval so that we will be able to give confidence to the client. At the end of the day, this is what we learned. For a, a, number one, uh, Lawrence, this is what I learned. No? That's why I was really happy with uh, what Alex presented with, prior to my presentation. I think it was an excellent segue. She, what she presented were opportunities. And then when we came in, it's like 
giving or are helping the clients take advantage of those opportunities. Number one, the, the rates are really low now. Uh, the, the rates that we currently we are currently offering, especially the, 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 the promo that we have with IDC, these rates were the rates that you would see uh, well, four or five years ago where in the rates were really cutthroat. It, we are now back to that level again. So the rates are low. And then the, the turnaround time will be faster because of the conditional approval. And guess what? We will make it even easier and sweeter for everyone. How do we plan to do this? This month, together with our conditional approval, we are launching our all-in financing. What does this mean? This means that even the registration uh, fees, the other, the other fees that the banks would normally charge together with the loan. Of course, a, a lot of this... Uh, the, a, a big chunk of this amount goes to the government, but now we can make this part of the loan so that it will become more affordable for the client, for the applicant. There will be less cash out because now it will be tucked into the loan, which will enjoy the very low rate that we are now offering. So I think this is an exciting time. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. I hope that uh, helped to answer the question. So. Uh, now let us have a last uh, question uh, for uh, Alex. Um, we have a question uh, about uh, uh, real estate practitioners in this uh, pandemic. What strategy can you suggest for a sustainable sales production? So you already can nurture your uh, practitioners now. You're on mute, uh, Alex. Hello. Okay, so to answer Ms. Fida's question, to really make your, any business, not just in real estate, in order to make, to make it sustainable, you need to do first personal branding or branding of the business. But for real estate practitioners, you can do personal branding. And then second is to really make use of the technology that we have, like for example, YouTube, social media, it, these are very powerful tools to really reach the consumers, especially video. Video is a huge, is a huge way, especially with YouTube, it's a huge way and a very effective way to meet your audience because through watching their your videos, you they will be able to get to know you and you can build that sense of rapport and trust. Because they, they will know that you are not a fly-by-night entrepreneur or a fly-by-night salesperson or broker since you've been uploading hundreds of videos already on YouTube. And also YouTube is also a search engine. So if they search Cagayan de Oro houses for sale or real estate in CDO, your name will appear if you are consistently posting on that platform. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much for your advice. Uh, so we have uh, now... Uh, we are at the end of uh, our webinar. Um, I think uh, uh, we can now take a, a selfie. I would like to invite everyone or those who can to on their cameras and we will just uh, have uh, a um, screenshot where we take our pictures with a smile. Uh, so we can tell those that have not assisted this uh, event uh, what they missed. So we can go ahead. So uh, get one, two, three, smile. So, okay, let me get another one because we have a different screens here. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Okay, fantastic. And one more. One, two, three, smile. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, this, we are now at the end of uh, our presentation. Uh, I thank uh, all uh, speakers uh, and uh, uh, panelists uh, and also all attendees uh, for your presence. I hope this has been an informative event. I hope you have discovered something new, especially maybe about uh, real estate investing and uh, that uh, Cagayan de Oro is uh, the best uh, hotspot for uh, real estate right now in the region, uh, uptown, 
top of all, and uh, the condominium of uh, Italy Venus Development Corporation with Primavera City, and where Miss Gladys Echano has given us a great, great offer that you can avail. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, have a nice uh, weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, IDC. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you, everyone. Hi, guys. Thanks, Lawrence. Thank you. the future searching for a wise investment looking for your own place we all dream of being financially set for life although you can save money in the bank that won't protect you from inflation there is a better way to make your money work for you such as investing in smart real estate that provides high appreciation and value regular cash as passive income elegant design and a healthy lifestyle. With a property investment from Italpinas, you can grow your money and protect it from inflation. Earn hassle-free rentals by leaving the job to our property management service handled by Damiani. And enjoy green living with fresh air, natural light, less cost for electricity and water, and to protect the environment. Enjoy living in multi-awarded Italian design buildings. For the price of one cup of coffee per day, you can gain peace of mind and secure your future with a new home from Italpinas. Contact our property specialist to learn more about our flexible payment schemes. Invest for your future. And start your elegant green living lifestyle today with Italpinas.